There's always been some level of distrust for politicians. That's become almost palpable in recent years, opening the way for candidates who once upon a time would have been inconceivable. What's going on that makes so many feel that democratic politics isn't really serving their interests, and can we overcome it? Joining us now, on the line from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Graham Steele. He was that province's Minister of Finance and is the author most recently of The Effective Citizen, How to Make Politicians Work for You. And Graham Steele, we're delighted to welcome you back onto TVO tonight. How are you doing? Great to be here, Steve. Thanks. Excellent. I want to start with my favorite quote of the book, and uh, I guess I should warn all the parents who've got little kids watching right now. There is a wee bit of profanity in this quote, but I'm going to, re I'm going to read it just the way you wrote it. Here we go. Politicians don't like to lie, but they have developed so many techniques for shading the truth that it's no wonder citizens think of them as liars. But technically, they're not liars. They're bullshitters. And there's a big difference. Uh, okay, let's get into this. First question's obvious. Uh, what's the difference between a bullshitter and a liar? <laughs> well, some, somebody who is using BS as a technique, it doesn't really matter to them whether what they're saying is true or not. What they're aiming for is the impact on the listener, on the voter, on the citizen. And I know from my time in politics that that is something that all politicians do. I did it myself. So now that I'm out of politics, I, I wanted to say to people, look, if you're going to work with politicians, if you want to get things done, here's what you need to know about what's going on inside a politician's head and why it is that your politicians think and act this way. When politicians gather in those private moments, say in a caucus meeting, do they ever kind of um, let the guard down and acknowledge to one another, you should have heard me BS this guy the other day, I did a great job. Do you have those conversations? Uh, I, I think there's some admiration in the Cox community, because okay, you're right, when, once you're behind closed doors, uh, that kind of stuff all, all falls away, and that's where the real conversations of politics happen. And when politicians are talking amongst themselves, yeah, I think there's a little bit of admiration for the way that people handle different situations, because that, that at the end of the day is what it's all about, is handling the situations that politics throws at you and doing it in a way that allows you and your party and your government to keep moving forward, sure. What made you go into politics in the first place? Well, if I was like everybody else, I'd say, well, I wanted to make a difference. And it just, you know, when I was delivering papers as a kid, Steve, in Winnipeg, which is where I grew up, it's like I'd, I'd read the paper as I was walking along the street. And politics just seemed to be where the action was. That seemed to be where the really interesting people were doing interesting things. So, you know, when I got a little bit older and the opportunity presented itself, I thought to myself, well, well why not? Why would you not want to be around the decision-making tables? And I was fortunate enough to be elected and was in elected office for 12 years. I, I spent a lot of time around politicians, and now that I'm at the other end and out of politics, I, I think I have a pretty good idea about what makes politicians tick. And so I wanted to leave this book behind to say to people, Here's what you need to know. Here's what's going on behind closed doors and inside the politicians' heads. And you're not going to get anywhere unless you know that. Well, some of it is not all that flattering, if you don't mind my say. I mean, uh, yes, people do want to make a difference. And yes, uh, there is a notion of public service at play here. Uh, but I think um, a lot of what you say does not reflect necessarily um, very nicely on politicians. You, you, I yeah, mean, have I got I, that right? I think that's true, but it, here's the thing is what I'm aiming for is not to sugarcoat it and say, well, here's the way things ought to be. What I'm aiming for is a realistic portrait of how politicians think, uh, how they behave, how they speak. Because remember, just going back to the title that you mentioned, The Effective Citizen, I'm writing this to citizens to say, look, this is what you need to know. So the first half of the book is here's what you need to know to understand politicians. And no, it's not all that flattering, but it's, I like to think it's realistic. And then the second half of the book is the more optimistic part, which says, okay, now that you know what's going on inside your uh, politicians' heads, here's what you do with it. Here's how you get things done. Uh, I am interested in, and I, I've seen this and you have as well, where people get into public life for the best of reasons, and then, you know, as the expression goes, stuff happens. And they get cynical, they get difficult, and so on and so forth. I, can you um, peel back the curtain a bit on what all of that stuff is that happens that changes them from uh, kind of Jimmy Stewart on his way to Washington <laughs> to a uh, cynical, hard-bitten, you know, very unhappy person? 
you know, it, it, everybody that I know got into politics for the right reasons. But one of the keys here, Steve, is that a lot of people getting get into politics with only a very vague idea about what it involves. And then if they're elected, they find out the job is quite different from what they expected. And a lot of them are uh, overwhelmed. I would even go so far as to say a lot of your politicians are, are scared uh, because they're expected to know a little bit about a whole lot of very difficult issues. People are coming at them all the time with new issues. They can barely deal with the files that are already on their desk. They're overwhelmed, they're scared. And so what happens is, they develop a whole bunch of techniques in order just to survive. And so I see that more as survival techniques than anywhere else. But the key thing for citizens is to be able to spot them and recognize them and then counter them. It, it doesn't guarantee that the citizen is going to get everything they want. Of course not. But at least it might level the playing field a little bit if the citizen can look at what the politician is doing and saying, OK, I see what's going on there. You do acknowledge in your book with this quote, at times I have badly, behaved badly myself. And um, I, I guess I want to know how much more cynical were you at the end of your political life than you were at the beginning? N not cynical. I, I really don't, I don't care for the word cynical. Uh, I like to say more, more realistic. It's, I, the thing is, Steve, that I, like a lot of people, I got into politics for, for good reasons for, uh, and um, but I was naive. I recognize now that I'm naive. I thought I knew what I was doing, and I was good at some parts of the job. But it took me 15 years, three years as a staffer, and then 12 years in elected office, really to learn how to be a good politician. And I made a lot of mistakes along the way. So uh, at the end of the, my time in politics, I probably came out of it more rueful than anything else. Sorry that I hadn't been able to accomplish more and they didn't know more going in. So what, what I would say to anybody thinking about going into politics is, for heaven's sake, learn the job. Talk to people who've been there, talk to the people who've done it, and say, what is this job really all about? So that the, so that the difficulty of the job, the complexity of the job doesn't wash over you, and all you can do then is just follow these various techniques to survive. Well, I wonder, at, the, at the end of the day, you want to get things done with your citizens. I, I do wonder, though, Graham, if there's not a bit of a disconnect here. Because on the one hand, you seem to be suggesting that good politics in a democracy very much depends on an effective citizenry, which is, of course, the, almost the title of your book. But then again, don't we elect you to do all this, quote unquote, grunt work so that we don't have to do it? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a certain amount of truth to that. It, 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 this, whole, this whole thing about, you know, are we electing people to exercise um, their judgment on our behalf? And I, that's one point of view, but I don't think it's the one that's most widely accepted. The best politicians are the one who stay in close touch with their constituents, who, who understand what the public mood is. And sometimes they're willing to lead the public mood. Sometimes they're willing to follow it. Uh, but it's keeping in touch with citizens that counts. But what happens after a while is that the poli politician puts survival and re-election ahead of everything else. And that causes them to act and think in certain ways. What I'm trying to do in this book is say to people, this is what you need to know to level the playing field a little bit so that you have a fighting chance to catch your politicians attention and to bring out the best in that politician rather than just the survival instinct, which, which you see so much, especially in veteran experienced politicians. Well, in fact, you've got a bit of a cheat sheet in the book as to what the main tasks or goals of politicians are. And, and here it is. I mean, three easy points. Nothing is more important than getting elected and reelected. Always be loyal to your party and leader. Take credit often and avoid blame always. Now, again, you know, you t and I take you at your word that you're not a cynical person and politics didn't make you more cynical. But those are three very cynical observations about what politics is all about. Are they do not? Think, do, I mean, do you think those are cynical? I, I, I don't think they're cynical at all. I Nothing see them is as more being, important uh, than getting elected and reelected. Nothing is more uh, important than getting elected and reelected. How about serving the public? Isn't that more important? Well, no, not, not once you're in politics. It's not. See, the, the thing about uh, wanting to be reelected, that's, that's not news to anybody, the fact that the politician is always thinking about how is it that they're going to win the next election. Um, but, but the thing is that, that 
if we accept the fact that that's not going to change, then, um, then, then what citizens need to know is how do you work with that so that you're, you're working with the politicians, essentially sitting side by side with them so the politician can achieve what they want at the same time that the citizen can achieve what they want. So it's like a partnership instead of a clash. Okay. Is at the end of the day what you want for effective citizens to achieve is more rationality and less emotionality in the way they approach public life? I, 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 want them to, I want people to feel engaged with the political system. And the worst thing for the system is when people feel they're hitting their head against a brick wall, they're getting nowhere, they get turned off. That's where conspiracy theories develop. All those bad things about politics. If citizens feel and believe that with a certain uh, approach or a set of knowledge, you can get things done, that's what will bring them back. That's what will get them motivated and interested in politics again. And at the end of the day, Steve, that's what I'm aiming for, to say to people, if you're not getting anywhere, maybe it's not the politician, maybe it's you. Maybe there's things that you can do to be more effective. It, it, it's like a lobbying book for people who can't afford a lobbyist. <laughs> Which is almost everybody. There we go. Okay, Graeme Steele, thanks so much for this. Sit tight. We're going to do through the magic of television here a little uh, set rejigging and then invite uh, some more folks to join the conversation. Thanks very much, Steve. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.